Hello, my friends. I'm Clover, and this is Genuinely Approachable Sudoku, and today we are solving Refugee by Philip Newman. This is a Gamma and Epsilon Sudoku. So we have normal Sudoku rules, meaning we're placing the digits 1 through 9 once each in each row, each column, and each outlined 3 by 3 region. And in addition, we have some white dots that are marked with 5s and some black dots that are marked with 3s. And this is similar but not the same as Kropke pairs. Wherever you see a white dot that's marked by five, that means the two digits on either side of the white dot have to have a difference of five. They have to be five apart. So for example, three and eight would be a good pair, six and one would be a good pair, two and seven, or four and nine. Those are actually all of the possibilities. Whenever you see a black dot marked with a three, the two digits on either side have to have a ratio of one to three, or in other words, one of them has to be three times larger than the other. The pairs that work there are 1 and 3, 2 and 6, or 3 and 9. And not all possible pairs have necessarily been marked with clues, so just because you don't see a black or white dot doesn't mean necessarily that the two digits don't have one of those two relationships. So let's start by penciling in our remaining digits in our columns here. We can't fill any of those out just yet, so let's work on some of our dots. So this pair can't have a 6 in it, so it can't be 2 and 6, so it's either 1 and 3 or 3 and 9, which means this pair is also either 1 and 3, 3 or 9. We have two 9s here. This is definitely not a 9, and one of these two is going to be a 9. Now, this pair cannot have a 9 in it, so this is either 1 and 3 or 2 and 6. There is definitely a 3 in one of these, so this can't be a 3, meaning that can't be a 1. This can't be a 6 because there's a 6 in the row, meaning that can't be a 2. All right, I'm going to take a look at this now, because there does have to be a 3 in one of these because it's either 1 and 3 or 3 and 9. So we can't use a 1, we can't use a 2, and we can't use a 3 for this pair. So this pair has to be 4 and 9, and that's going to get us some momentum here. We now know that the 9 goes there, and then this is going to be a 2 and a 6, just like that. So my last two digits here are going to be 4 and 5 in the row. Now if you look at this 5 clue, we can't ever put a 5 on one of our white 5 dots because there is no digit in Sudoku that is exactly 5 away from the digit 5. So this has to be a 4, and the digit 5 away from it is 9. That makes this a 5. Now, this is either a 1 which goes to a 6 or a 3 which goes to an 8 because there's a 6 in the region already. That's going to be a 3 which goes to an 8. So now let's do a bit of Sudoku down here just to tidy up before we move on. We need 2, 4, and 5 here. There's a 4-9 pair right there, so that's going to be not a 4. Oh, and by the way, we already have a 4 in column 9 over here. So row 3, our 4 is accounted for, so that's going to be our 9. That's going to be our 4. So we can just tidy that up right now. That means this isn't a 9. There's also a 9 here, so that's not a 9. So this is going to be a 9 for column 1. Over here, we need not a 5 right there. This is going to be 1, 3, 4, and a 7. And this can't be 3 or 7 because those are both in the row already. And I think I'm going to leave the rest of the bottom part of the grid for now. Let's look at these clues. So this one can't have a 3 in it anymore, so this has to be a 2 and 6. And now, because this digit can't be 2 or 6, this can't be a 2-6 pair. It also can't have a 9 in it, so this must be a 1-3, and it has to go this way around because of the 1 right there. That resolves these digits. 3 is going to go with an 8, which is going to turn around and go with a 3. We have a 1 and 3 in row 2 already, so that's going to be a 5. We have a 1 in row 4 already, so that's a 3, making that a 1. Now that's no longer a 4, so we can place our 4 in region 7 that we were looking at earlier. These are from 1, 2, and 5. That can't be a 1 because of the 1 in column 6, so that's going to be a 1. Now we need 2, 5, and 6 to finish the region, so this is a naked 5 because we have 2 and 6 in the column, and this region is done. And that also allows us to finish this region. Now up here, we still need 5 and 7, just like that. Here we need 7 and 8, and we can't resolve those yet. And here we're going to need a 4 and a 9. And now I believe we have fully resolved all of our clues, so we're going to be using some classic Sudoku. So if you look at row 3, the only place for a 1 in row 3 is there, and that makes this a 7. We still need 6, 7, and 9 to finish off region 3. That's not going to be a 6, that's not going to be a 9. 
In this row, that's looking pretty full. We still need a six and seven. They have to go there and there because of the six and seven in this region. And then the last two digits are gonna be five and eight. Now, if we look at this column, we need five, six, and eight. This is a naked five. This is a naked eight. And that's going to be our six, which eliminates six there. The seven, nine pair we get out of that resolves the rest of region two. This is the only position for a five in region one because of the five in column two right there. So that's a five. That's a three. Now I need to finish the region with a three and an eight. One and two go right here. I have a three already in column seven up at the top. So that's going to be a seven and a three, a nine and a seven. These are going to be one and four in that order. And I have a nine here and a two to finish off the puzzle. And that is how you solve Philip Newman's lovely refugee. I found that one really nice and flowy, kind of breezy and quick to get through. Hope you guys enjoyed it too. To check it out yourself, the link is in the description of this video. And I will see you again in three days.